something that's very dear to me. It's going to take a brief backstory, so bear with me. I am a creature of habit. When I was younger, I had a very close friend. We did absolutely everything together. I trusted her with my life. One day when we were at church together, our pastor asked for a volunteer to lead a group of girls elsewhere. I raised my hand excitedly. Almost immediately, this friend of mine looked back at me and uttered the words, you're a follower, not a leader. Put your hand down. This utterance had a lot more impact on me than I would have ever conceived back then. From then on, I convinced myself that I was born as a follower. That would explain why I'm inclined to introversion, right? Why I often feel overlooked and ignored. I told myself this as I ripped up my student leader application in middle school and threw it away. I told my friends this in high school when they encouraged me to apply to ASB. I convinced myself that I wasn't capable. What I didn't realize was that my friend was partially right. I am a follower. But my being a follower is what allows me to be a leader. Late in my high school career, I joined a club called Young Ladies of Christ. Unknowingly, I had stepped into a group that would change the way I viewed myself entirely. The lady that headed up this group is one of the most incandescently splendiferous women I will ever meet in my lifetime. She planted a seed in my life that has already begun bearing good fruit. Time after time, this woman lifted me up and gifted me the opportunity of leadership. Along with attending the occasional tea party and theater production together, we would go out into the community and volunteer. On the weekends, we would go to soup kitchens, we would pass out water to the homeless, and then sometimes we would raise money for nonprofits working with new parents. After a while, I found myself taking the reins. I was leading the group in a service project that I had done on my own before. It was a project that was very important to me and that I had participated in three years prior. So I invited the girls from my group to join me in serving up this fundraiser. I was set as an example to set up tables at this Royal Family Kids Camp fundraiser. So they watched me set one table up in this banquet room and then we did the rest together. I didn't stop there with accepting leadership opportunities. I was, for a time, the treasurer of the group. So I handled the money, and then it also gave me an opportunity to have new conversations with the girls that I was working with. We were facilitating growth in each other, relying on each other to carry out the roles of a nonprofit organization. I carried out this responsibility until it was time for me to look for colleges. It was hard for me to put this season behind me. All I desired was to fill as much of my time remaining outside of college with community service. I wanted God to break my heart open before I stepped out on my own. I knew that college would be no exception for my role as an advocate. I knew that I would have to have a lot of difficult conversations. So by the time I got to NCU, I had learned to embrace my calling as a follower, a follower of Christ. And as a follower of Christ, I can lead his people back to him. I used to have this image of a leader burned into my brain where someone stood in front of a group with this bright red flag. But I should have never been shopping around for that bright red flag because his light is so much brighter than any flag I could order off of Amazon. <laughs> One thing that I learned from stepping into servanthood before leadership is that a leader from Christ is not just delegating, they're doing. They're not in the front of the group saying, hey, make sure you keep your eyes on me. There's a sheepdog in the back saying, keep your eyes on him. They're the ones at the feet of the people washing them. They're the ones speaking life into the people around them. They're the ones planting seeds. Leadership does not start when servanthood ends, but rather, Leadership builds from a faithful servanthood. So first I call myself a follower, and then I call myself a sheepdog. I've learned that your role as a leader is not predetermined by choices that you've made, 
mistakes that have happened, or even an identity that you have assumed. Rather, it's a gift from the greatest leader that has ever been. Just because someone around us has stepped up, that doesn't mean that you have to step down. It shouldn't be a power struggle. It should be a community of followers humbling themselves before Christ. This is not to say that a leader should be timid, but rather that they derive their motivation from something so much greater than just directing others. Every follower has the potential to be a leader, and in some ways they already are, but a leader of Christ resembles their life after Christ. The title of leader holds so many preconceptions for me, but it also holds hope. Hope that someday I will hear the words, well done, my child. I'd like to leave you with a quote from John Stott. The authority by which a Christian leader leads is not power, but love. Not force, but example. Not coercion, but reason persuasion. Leaders have power, but power is safe only in the hands of those who humble themselves to serve.